Constant speed props have been around for quite a while, and in practice they're fairly simple to operate. But I often find that how they work can be hard to understand for the student transitioning to complex aircraft. A constant speed prop is somewhat like a car's automatic transmission. It selects the proper gearing for the plane speed in order to keep the engine at an efficient RPM. By comparison, a normal fixed pitch propeller is going to be more like a car with just a third gear. It's just a, at best a compromise between low speed and high speed. The gearing though, in this case, is the pitch of the propeller blades or the, the angle of the propeller blades. Remember, a propeller is, is nothing more than a rotating wing at its core. And just like a wing, it has an optimum angle of attack. Too shallow and it won't produce any thrust, but too steep and it's just going to stall, just like a, a normal wing would. To see why this is important, imagine a plane with a normal fixed pitch propeller sitting on the end of the runway with its parking brake set. Every time the blade turns, it takes another bite out of the air equal to the pitch of the blades. The angle of attack is equal to the pitch at this point because the plane is not moving forward. The situation is more complicated though once we advance thrust, throttle, and start taking off. As the plane gains forward momentum and picks up airspeed, the air seems to strike the propeller at more forward of an angle. This reduces the effective angle of attack from when the plane was just sitting still. Now picture the same plane once it's reached cruise and leveled off and is approaching top speed. The relative wind shifts even more forward and the angle of attack is now extremely small. The propeller becomes very easy to turn and so the RPM increases towards redline and the propeller doesn't produce much thrust at this point. This is more like trying to drive your car in first gear on the interstate. You're just you're not going to get the, the forward drive, the mom momentum that you need. The answer to the problem is to change gears, and for planes this means being able to change the pitch of the blades. This is the beauty of the constant speed prop, is we can adapt the propeller to maintain the uh, optimum engine RPM or the loading on the propeller. This way the angle of attack stays closer to its max efficiency, and now we can drive a plane with all five gears. In this way you can say the propeller can now bite about the right amount of air once again. It isn't exactly what's happening, but it's a, a good analogy. This is also why fine pitch or high RPM is recommended for takeoff or slow flight or any maneuvers that have to do with a low airspeed, and why your instructor says to increase the RPM before increasing the throttle. You don't want to overload the engine by accident. The other piece to this puzzle, though, is a mechanism to control the propeller. It's called a governor, and without it, the pilot's very busy making all kinds of small adjustments in order to keep the RPM the same. Instead, though, with the governor, we can just set an RPM, and the governor maintains it hydraulically. It actually takes engine oil from the sump and will pump it or control it into the propeller hub in order to change the blade pitch. And this is also why it's called a constant speed prop, because the governor tries to keep the engine at a constant speed. The heart of the governor is a set of flyweights that rotate on a shaft connected to the engine. Going back to our plane and cruise, as the engine builds up RPM, the flyweights in the governor will swing out and lift up on a pilot valve. This routes oil into the prop hub and increases the blade pitch. A higher blade pitch causes more drag and is harder for the engine to turn, so the, in the RPM decreases back to where the pilot has set it. The force of the flyweights on the pilot valve is counteracted by this speeder spring at the top of the pilot valve. The two forces are constantly working against one another, and once they equalize, the flow of the oil stops to the prop hub, and the blade pitch will remain at that setting. The pilot then can select a specific RPM by changing the tension of the speeder spring. And this is also what that little blue knob or lever in the cockpit is attached to, in case you ever wondered. The exact opposite occurs if the RPM drops too low. The flyweights move in, the speeder spring will push down on the pilot valve, and oil will be able to return from the propeller hub back to the engine's sump. There's a large return spring in the propeller hub that forces the piston and the oil back 
into the, uh, the engine and the blades towards a fine pitch. Now in reality, the governor is constantly making these adjustments to keep the set RPM, but it's easier to notice when we're starting a climb, a descent, or changing RPM settings. Looking at the cutaway of a governor now, you can clearly see the speeder spring, the pilot valve, and the fly weights, and most of the other parts that we've diagrammed here. And in the prop hub, you can also see the piston, the cylinder, and the return spring. Also keep in mind that everything I've talked about so far relates to single-engine aircraft. If this was instead a multi-engine plane, the process is reversed somewhat, and oil pressure pushes the prop towards a fine pitch instead of, or a flat pitch instead of towards a high pitch. The idea is if an engine failed on a, a multi, on a twin, the uh, propeller would be forced more towards a higher pitch and it would present less drag to the oncoming air. This reduces the yaw sensation that you would get from a failed engine in a twin. Again, this is really just the basics of propeller and governor operation. Um, there's far more to know, of course. If you're interested, I would recommend checking out the links I've posted in the description. Um, there's plenty of videos here on YouTube that will go into a deeper de detail. Um, and I would also recommend the book uh, Aerodynamics for Naval Aviators. There's a section in there that goes over propeller efficiency and disc loading in much greater detail.